This week's episode of our show has been sponsored by Fables 2, Pirates of the Ethereal Expanse. This second installment in the Fables franchise has you set sail into a magical ocean, taking up your pirate-themed campaign and going out on great adventures in this mystical, magical, almost space-like ocean. We were super excited by the trailer, and you should definitely check it out uh, in the links below, because Pirates of the Ethereal Sea is an amazing blend of high piracy and high magic. I have tried to run several pirate-themed campaigns. I'm a big fan of them, and I gotta say the inspiration here is top-notch. I was really, really excited just watching the trailer and can't wait to see what's in store in these next upcoming chapters. Each fable is broken into six chapters, and you get a new adventure every month to download. They come with everything that you need to run it, including digital maps and tokens and tools. So whether you're playing in person or online, it's a perfect way to have a new campaign to play every six months. And this new Fables adventure is coming on July 1st, so it's not even that far away. So check the links below, watch the trailer. This is definitely one to keep your eyes on. Thanks so much to Fables 2 and Ghostfire Games for sponsoring this episode. Things like this help us do what we do here on YouTube. And now on to this week's episode. Greetings! My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today we are continuing our series in ranking the classes in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition by Party Roll. Specifically today, we're going to discuss the Explorer Infiltrator role. This is a role that helps the party out in exploration scenarios, getting where they need to go, discovering clues and pathways and passages through natural environments, as well as infiltrating enemy bases or strongholds using stealth spells or other mechanics. Naturally, the Infiltrator Explorer party role excels at the ex exploration pillar of D&D play, but the exploration pillar can actually have a huge impact on combat as well, allowing your party members to avoid combat encounters, set up ambushes, or scout out an enemy, an enemy environment so they can be prepared for the encounters that they're going to face along the way. It can also come into play with puzzle solving, navigating difficult terrain, skill challenges, and much, much more. Well, the classic scenario for the infiltrator is the heist, they can also be called up to be, be the ones who lead the party through overland travel and other similar scenarios. If you look on screen right now, you're going to see the criteria that we use to rank the subclasses. We are only going to award one S tier to the class that we think is the best in the role. A tier is phenomenal, and a class that we give an A means that that class is probably going to lean into that role regardless of your build. A B means that certain builds and options are going to excel in that role, and you can likely build your character to be a good explorer infiltrator. C, there might be a couple options, but you're going to have to try pretty hard to make your character good at the role. And D, there's not really very many avenues for you to be good at the role unless you take very specific feats or a very specific build. Kelly and I have each ranked the classes by the role, and we've also got the results from our community poll as well to see which class our community thought was the strongest in the Explorer Infiltrator role. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. So let's kick things off with the Artificer. How does the Artificer stack up as an Explorer or an Infiltrator? Here's what I'll say about the Artificer. Um, we've said a lot of good things about the Artificer, and they do have some useful tools and some useful spells that can help out in infiltration and exploration. However, I think that it's very specific in having to build your artificer to mm. do that. Most of the time, artificers are better at blowing things up than they are at infiltrating or exploring. But they're not the worst in the game. Indeed, one of the artificers sort of claims to fame here can be the ways that they can use their tools to interact with the environment, and in particular, traps. Artificers are one of many classes in the game that can get proficiency in these tools very, very easily and be pretty good at using them to boot. But there's a lot more to exploration and infiltration than disarming traps, and there's a lot more ways to deal with traps than proficiency in thieves' tools. And so this is kind of where, as an artificer, you get some options, but not a lot. And the Artificer doesn't really drive you towards any options that are going to make you any good at stealth or nature or perception. You might be able to have some good modifiers, but there's not really a lot here. And I think that the spell list definitely pulls you more towards a support role. I think for me, the Artificer overall is a C. 
there's certainly some ways that they can support the explorer and the infiltrator role, but they're not really a specialist in it. Yeah, I'd say I agree with the C ranking. Uh, at best, they're helping out in those categories, but they're not going to be the reliable member of the party for exploration or infiltration. And if they are, they've done a very specific job to try to be. I think there are some cool things that you can do with the Artificer if you happen to have a familiar or a homunculus or one of the other pets like the Steel Defender by sending them forward as a scout. But all of those creatures themselves are pretty miserable scouts too. So they're likely to get destroyed if they're going into a hostile environment. Anyways, you can use them to kind of scout around, but it's pretty limited in in your options there. As we come to the Barbarian, I I don't really have much to say here. You're a giant muscle man with an axe and you're not trying to... Your way of sneaking is to break the door in gently. I think a Barbarian's definition of stealth is leaving no one alive left over to tell the tale that you were there. And often barbarians want to leave someone to tell the tale of their glorious conquest. So in in many cases, I think the barbarian is kind of the anti-infiltrator. They're usually the one who ruins it for everyone else by screaming in and uh, by starting their rage with a horrific bellow or scream and rushing into battle. If, If there is a... If I could give out like a D minus like this might even be the F tier of the Explorer Infiltrator because so often barbarians are role played in a way that makes it difficult. <laughs> yes, your barbarian will ruin your infiltration yeah. and exploration attempts at the table. This isn't the case all the time. We're just yeah. talking from our experiences and the people that we've had play barbarians love to just rage and run in screaming and they will scream i actually remember a situation where a barbarian at our table we were trying to sneak in and he started playing his war drum as we were sneaking (laughs) in and we're like why and we alerted all the enemies so Uh, f tier yeah yeah uh in all seriousness uh, sure maybe you could have a barbarian that has proficiency in stealth uh but that's they're not built for it Coming on to the Bard, though, this is where we've got some real potential as an Explorer Infiltrator. Right off the bat, Bards, their tack with Infiltration and Exploration often dovetails with social interaction. Because the Bard style of Infiltration is often going to cross into the territory of Illusion, Impersonation, and social manipulation. And so this is once again one of the areas where I think we see the sort of cross-pollination of two party roles. This one being the social uh, social interaction sort of role, the in- investigator negotiator alongside the explorer infiltrator. In this respect though, I think the bard really excels because they have all the tools to do that kind of impersonation infiltration. But that type of infiltration is not always going to work for you, depending on the environment that you're going into. And as a bard, you're often going to be very dependent on your spell choices for which style of infiltration you prioritize. A bard does get expertise, and they can get a very good stealth on their own. On their own. And I'm really tempted to give my S tier to the bard for these reasons. But... It does depend on what spells you pick. And that's the thing, is bards aren't inherently built to be the explorer infiltrator. They have a great selection of spells that can help out here. And I will say you're definitely leaning towards the master of disguise. You're Mm -hmm. not necessarily going to be as sneaky as some other classes, and you're not going to have all of the spells that some other classes have or the abilities. Most bards don't have very many abilities that lean into infiltration exploration there are a few outside of what spells and class features you get really yeah yeah Yeah. but like the the core bard isn't built to be an explorer infiltrator but the ability to talk your way into a situation or pose as a noble figure to enter the castle undiscovered you're more of like the the james bond style smooth talking infiltrator than you are the like uh oceans 11 style infiltrator and i have to say for for my money that infiltration style the sort of social manipulation where you adopt a disguise or a persona and get into an environment that way 
I really think that that is, first of all, for me, that is one of the most fun ways yes. of doing it. Yes. Um, and I think it is really, really effective. But it isn't always going to be the pathway forward. I have seen it blow up horrifically in the face of players who have attempted it, especially when there are environments where the dungeon master is kind of playing the villain as the... The villain knows what they're doing, and like this is an environment where there is a needs to know passcode, which is changed every day, or everyone in the environment knows everyone there. I think one of the biggest things that I see with this bard infiltration style is that oftentimes it rests on the assumption that the guards don't know everybody that works in the fortress that there's a possibility that they wouldn't be informed of something usually that's how i see players do it it's like oh i'm an emissary that you weren't expecting to see or i'm a new recruit or something like that and sometimes the guards can actually reply to you by saying uh no i would know if you were actually here that means that you're you're a spy right and i and unfortunately that i don't i try to avoid that as a dm because it's a huge shutdown but it can happen I think for these reasons, the Bard is still a phenomenal explorer infiltrator, and I do want to give them an A. I think that when we look at the spectrum, for me, they're actually lower on the A, because I think mm. that there are several classes that do a better job than them, and do them without having to build themselves to do it. So for that reason, the Bard is close to a B for me, but I'm going to give them the A. I am going to give them an A with the leaning towards S. Because I do think the strategy is one of the stronger ones in the game. And I think that it really... And I think that the bards excel in it in a way that none of the other classes can. So they kind of have their specific version of the infiltrator. That version, the bard is the S tier. But if we're looking at all the different infiltration styles, all the different exploration styles that are possible, that's where I think the bard starts to lose some points. When we come to the cleric, this is another short conversation, I think. I don't see clerics as explorers or infiltrators. I will say that you might get away with something like a trickery domain cleric, yeah. who can be a cool infiltrator and use their spells and illusions to help out. Uh, a trickery domain cleric might have manipulative tactics, but that's one subclass. There's a lot of subclasses, and really, that's the best you're going to get. Beyond that, a lot of subclasses are getting heavy armor, and they're not mm -hmm. going to be sneaking anywhere. Clerics are support. They are healing. They are utility. They can be a decent front line. I don't think they're explorer infiltrators. If you're trudging through the jungles of Chult, your clunking around in cleric armor isn't going to help you out much. Yeah, you can keep the rest of the party alive. That's your job. But for the most part, I think they're a D in this category. Yeah, I do think that there is an argument to be made given the support options that, say, a nature domain cleric might bring. Okay, uh, true. Or, an, you know, twilight domain clerics can fly. Um, but overall, I do agree with you. I do think that domains aside... And if we look at the broad spectrum of the domains, they the cleric overall is a D here, with there being specific domain exceptions. But even then, I don't know if the trickery domain and the nature domain are great explorer infiltrators. They're good ones, but I would say even with those domains, you're still only getting like B tier. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that the cleric at their best, and that's one of the three or four options that make you the best, you're reaching to the on par with the artificer, where yeah. you can yeah. help the explorer infiltrator do better. But if your party is relying on the cleric for exploration or infiltration, it's not going to work. Now we come to the druid, though. Clerics and druids are often compared to each other in many ways. And there's a lot of similarities. But the druid's capability as an explorer infiltrator blows the doors off the cleric without even trying. Yeah, I love the druid for exploration infiltration. If you think of them as the nature wizard, which is what they are, they're the spellcaster dedicated to nature. They have a toolkit of spells that are so specifically geared towards exploration. And 
It's not immediately apparent. You don't really think of the Druid as the Explorer Infiltrator, but their toolkit for both of these pillars, Exploration and Infiltration, is off the chain when you really start to look at it. Things like speak with animals and speak with plants can be great for not only navigation, getting the lay of the land, but also asking them to infiltrate for you. There's also animal friendship, which helps out with this. You also get spells like Pass Without Trace, or at later levels you get Wind Walk, which is great for infiltration. So their toolkit of spells is incredible, and I think is, is underrated by a lot of people. Not only that, but when we come to the core feature of the Druid, which is Wild Shape, Everybody thinks of the Moon Druid turning into a bear and devouring their enemies on the battlefield. But any druid can turn into any low-level creature. And you may want to talk to your DM about this, but in our games, we allow the druid to just name an animal that would probably be a low enough challenge rating. If they want to turn into a fly, or a squirrel, or a cockroach, or a rat, those are all valid options. The amount of times that I have seen Wild Shape used for infiltration or scouting actually puts the rest of the classes to shame. Both Monty and I have ran in and played in campaigns that had a rogue, a druid, and a bard as player characters. And the druid was the go-to infiltrator and explorer in almost every situation. Playing out of the abyss, I had a druid at my table turn into a giant spider after they escaped from the prison in the first chapter and just walk around the camp getting the lay of the land infiltrating the entire base and finding out where everything they needed was. Why? Because there were already giant spiders. They had seen them wandering around, so they knew to turn into one. We've had a druid turn into a squirrel to scout an entire camp, know where all of the enemies were stationed, where they were keeping explosive barrels, and then we were able to pull off a perfect um, sabotage and heist of that base. The druid is my S tier. And I know that's going to shock a lot of people, but I think that the Druid is underrated in Exploration Infiltration and has all the tools you need for both of these. I think that there are some gaps in the Druid spell list. They don't get things like invisibility. And the Druid does not have the skill sort of support that you would expect for having like expertise or high stealth modifiers. They are a wisdom-based class though, so they're gonna have a really good perception score and they're gonna be good at survival. They're probably gonna have proficiency in nature. Especially given that D&D tends to occur in medieval or renaissance era settings where things like spiders, like, I mean, there's spiders all over the place in my own house. There's squirrels everywhere in, in any urban environment. There's always going to be rats somewhere. And people that live in those places notice those creatures, but don't ever think of them as something that is watching them, except for the squirrels. Um, but when you're a druid, it's just this innocuous everyday creature you have the ability to wander through and navigate an environment in a way that just no other character can like it's not even that you have to make stealth checks when you're just a spider or a fly on the wall nobody cares that you're there i mean of course generally speaking my approach to this is that inevitably there's going to be the guard that sees the spider and is like ah, oh, i'm scared of spiders and i'm going to squish it and that's how you add challenge to that scenario but it's just so good and it's so reliable and it works so reliably and it requires a lot of powerful magic like true sight in order for it to not not work and creatures with true sight are going to detect any other style of infiltration anyways and you're getting this at very low levels of play on an ability that you can use twice per short rest and that's just what wild shape is doing but then the druid is now bringing other features like Pass Without Trace, like Wind Walk, like Tree Stride, like even Water Breathing. Not only is the Druid an amazing Infiltrator Explorer on their own, but they bring the support to help the entire party at it as well. And I think that's the key, is having a Druid in your party means that the whole party can gain the benefits of ex exploration and infiltration. Whereas some of the other classes we're going to talk about are very solo in the way that they approach these scenarios. You can have a stealthy party that's generally good at all of these. If you're in a party with a druid, a cleric, a barbarian, and a fighter, and a paladin, 
you can still actually make those stealth yeah. checks because of Pass Without Trace yeah. or get into a place because of Wind Walk or other other spells. So the Druid helps everybody be better at it. That is kind of leaning towards the utility role, but for the purposes of exploration infiltration, you technically don't want to be alone when you get in there. Yeah. And being able to help everybody explore and infiltrate is really an amazing uh, a tribute for the druid. Now, I do think that the druid does have their limitations. They're not going to be able to do the infiltration that the bard does. And if they're out of spells and out of wild shape, they're really in a bad way. So for me, it's hard to give them an absolute S tier, but I think that they're the closest for me as well, just because every druid has wild shape, which means that every druid, regardless of their subclass, can use this strategy, and it's probably the strongest infiltration strategy in the game. As we move on to the fighter, I give the fighter a D. Uh, we could... Don't have much to say here. Yeah, yeah, you could pick some... Maybe there's... I don't even know if there's battle master maneuvers. There, the, you could for, be an archer fighter with proficiency in stealth and a good dexterity score, and that's the best that you can do. And that really is not an infiltrator. That's, that's kind just of available someone, to everybody. Yeah, that is. And I think that the monk is in the same position. I have different opinions on the monk. Okay. I think the fighter is a D. The monk doesn't really have anything that the fighter doesn't get. I, like, I mean, maybe step of the wind, but really? like. So here's my case on the monk. Uh, I'm giving the monk a B. Okay. What does a monk get in terms of exploration and infiltration that a fighter that is based on dexterity wouldn't? Let me tell you. Okay. First of all, I know that mobility isn't exploration or infiltration, but if you start thinking about combining mobility with your later features such as being able to run up walls or run across water, I could scale the wall of a castle just by running up it with my extended mobility. Several subclasses have really cool abilities to, uh, I'm thinking Shadow Monks. Now I know that's again one subclass, mm -hmm. but they can turn invisible, they can cast darkness, they can teleport. There are other subclasses that gain mo mobility features or features that allow them to get to where they need to go in better ways. If I'm exploring, I can climb up the tallest tree, I can jump from tree to tree, I can stay out of sight, I can scout. I played a monk, it was a shadow monk, so again, there might be some light bias here because I definitely played the monk that was... Light bias to the shadow monk? I mean, the shadow monk, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the shadow monk definitely is the monk that's geared towards infiltration yeah. exploration. But there were moments in that campaign that I went on ahead like a rogue would and I was able to infiltrate, explore, scout, and return to the party with mm -hmm. the necessary information. I don't think that every monk is going to be good at it. And yeah, gaining proficiency in stealth is not going to just do this for you. But gaining proficiency in stealth, being able to move 50 feet and run straight up a wall is actually going to have some really powerful implications for where you can get to and where you can get into. I will give the monk a C in light of this, but I think your B is far too de generous. That's fine. Monks got to be good at something, and this is one thing that I think... No, they, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> paladins are D, right? I think Paladins are D. If you're not wearing the biggest armor, carrying the biggest weapon, or holding the biggest yeah. shield, you're probably not a Paladin. Uh, paladins are good at so many things. I guess you can have a flying horse with some in greater steed, but that, like that's... That's Very not infiltration. Yeah, yeah. Your you're, horse is neighing and you're yelling like, I will smite thee. Yeah. Like, you're not sneaking. You're blowing things up with radiant energy. I think so often, actually, the paladin falls into the same camp as the barbarian in that they usually are the anti-explorer -explor infiltrator. Yeah. Right? They So, again, like D- minus for many in terms of practical levels of how, how they're played. But on the other hand, the ranger... The Ranger was in consideration for my highest ranking. Mm. With the Ranger, they're actually personally my second favorite choice. Hmm. Now, the reason for this is with the Ranger, you get limited spell casting, but those spells are similar to the Druids. Yeah, and some of the, ra the Ranger subclasses, the newer ones, are getting amazing spells on their spell list that are really amping up their exploration features 
In addition, the expansions to the ranger spell list and the optional class features give them opportunities to make their basic skills better. You can get expertise very easily as a ranger, so you could have that monstrous stealth modifier that you're now stacking with Pass Without Trace and other features. So your sort of conventional, co or I would say the ranger is the best at the commando style infiltration. Yes, yeah. and also there's so many cool subclasses for the ranger that uh, gain you abilities to fly or gain you abilities to teleport or gain you a companion, a beast companion that can kind of work like a little mm -hmm. infiltrator. If you have... If you're a Beastmaster Ranger with the Beast of the Sky, yeah. you have an eagle that you can just soar over top of camps. There's a lot of situations where the Ranger can excel, again, at helping the whole party be better, yep. at being a good infiltrator. I say that they lean more on the Explorer, but they're Definitely. not to be underestimated as an infiltrator either. As we come to it, I think that the Ranger hits this amazing middle ground between the strengths of the Druid and the strengths that we're going to discuss with the Rogue. And that makes them a solid A. Yeah. Yeah. I, I give them the A because they do feel like the roguish druid. Yep. They're, they're, they are that happy middle. And the rogue and the druid, we're about to come to the rogue, but they're two of the highest ranked. Yep. Which means that the ranger is also one of the highest ranked because they're the happy in between. Now let's come to the rogue because I think we should start off by saying the rogue is amazing. And I think we're both giving it the A tier ranking. We are both yeah. giving it the A tier ranking. It was in consideration for the S as well as the Ranger and the Druid for me. Mm -hmm. Those were my considerations. I think for you it was the Rogue, Bard, and Druid. Yes. Um, and that's fair. I think those four are kind of our icons. I, I agree. Here's what makes the Rogue amazing at their style of infiltration, which very much the Rogue's style of infiltration exploration is the classic stealth game archetype. They're going to be relying on their stealth skills, their acrobatic skills, to get into a place and remain unseen while they're gathering information, stealing things, picking locks, disarming traps, doing all those conventional things. Here's the funny thing about it though. The rogue is amazing at all that. They're going to get expertise in whatever skills you want. They're going to have every DM has felt the impact of a rogue who has a monstrous stealth bonus because they end up having expertise with a high dexterity score and they're like rolling 30 on stealth. Doesn't matter how high you roll on stealth checks though, you're not invisible. And so ultimately the rogue, unlike the bard, unlike even the ranger and definitely unlike the druid, the rogue, despite being the scoundrel, has to play by the rules of infiltration. They have to use their skills, they have to use their cunning, they have to use their ingenuity, but they don't have any powers or any abilities that give them an edge beyond the skills they bring to the table. And that is actually what holds them back because their infiltration style, while they are unequivocally the masters, is not the best infiltration tactic, in my opinion. I agree with you. I'm giving the rogue the highest honors with an A, an A plus even. I'm playing a rogue, the sneaking, the infiltration, it's all great. And mm -hmm. you're not going to be at a loss playing a rogue. In no way are we saying that the rogue is a bad choice. They are no. not, they are no. one of the best choices. But when we talk about why we're giving the S tier to a different class, I do want to say this. So here's my scenario for you. There's a guard on guard duty and there's ruffling in the bushes and he goes over and as he approaches, a bird flies out of the bushes and he thinks, oh, it must have just been the bird. He pushes the bushes aside and he sees a squirrel and a man dressed in black crouching. Well, he's going to stab the man dressed in black crouching, ignore the squirrel and forget about the bird. That bird was the eyes and ears of the ranger, and that squirrel is the druid itself. The man dressed in black crouching, although d doing a very good job, just missed on one stealth roll and is now found out by the guard. Meanwhile, as the guard is pulled away, the bard just sneaked in invisibly and is now going to be impersonating that guard when they get inside. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the problem with the, the rogue. Again, it's the it's a small problem, and the chances are that the rogue wouldn't fail their stealth check and would sneak from that bush, 
through the door somehow they would find a way mm -hmm. but this is just to highlight the fact that there are many options for infiltration and the rogue is one of the best but not necessarily the greatest in the game well and it also comes back into that so that lone wolf style that the rogue is prone to when you're the one infiltrating on your own and you're going in there you need an escape plan and the rogue really doesn't have the escape plan in the same way that the other characters do. Now, the rogue subclasses can very much address this. I think that an arcane trickster rogue, who now has invisibility, who could bring Misty Step, who can have a familiar of their own, oh, is yeah. operating on another level compared to a baseline rogue. It really changes the game there. Uh, and that's where it elevates beyond that. But ultimately, although the rogue excels as an infiltrator and excels as, as an explorer, their reliance on the skill checks means that they have to play fair. And as soon as you start exploring things that magic gives you, you have other options. In fairness, though, the rogue's never going to run out of spell slots. And that's why they're an A+. Yeah. Because they are reliable, and you cannot build a rogue... Well, I mean, you have to try really, really hard to build a rogue that's bad at exploration mm -hmm. and infiltration. It's in their blood to be good explorers and infiltrators, and they're going to be one of the best in the game. If you have a party with a rogue, a druid, and a ranger, you have a master infiltration team. To close things out, I think we can talk about the sorcerer, the warlock, and the wizard together here. Because for me, all three of them are Bs. I agree with that, because in our rankings, B is for build. Yeah. And these all are very good spellcasters. The Warlock was almost lower, but then I almost put it higher. So Warlock's the one interesting one I do want to talk about. But with Sorcerers and Wizards, I think that are you choosing spells that are helping with exploration and infiltration? Then you're good. Are you not choosing spells that do that? Then you're bad. Puts them right in the middle. It's yeah. all on your spell choices. Yeah, because... You can build a wizard that has the same problem as the barbarian. They take fire. The, uh, um, the the wizard responds with confusion when they say to be quiet as they prime their fireball to throw, uh, and you end up with characters that have very flashy spells. I would say of the three, the one that has the little bit of the advantage is the sorcerer because of subtle spell. I will agree with that. Although I will say that warlocks have some really great invocations. Yes. And access to some really great illusion spells. They can they can gain invisibility. They yep. can fly. If they take Mask of Many Faces, there's options that almost made me want to give the, uh, the warlock an A. But then I realized what I was comparing it to elsewhere. Yeah. And I did feel like B was the right place. But I think all of these have ways to build them to be mm -hmm. very helpful in these categories. Yeah. Uh, an enchantment or an illusionist wizard is really going to do a lot better. A diviner wizard is going to do really, really well with exploration, in fact, because they could just cast Arcane Eye to scout things out or use their divination spells to learn about it. Again, that kind of brings us into the investigator role a little bit. But I think that that's the, the great hybrid nature of these roles. But it does mean in all of these cases, with the Sorcerer, the Warlock, and Wizard, you have to decide to make your character good at it. And so, while you could make them amazing, and I think a well-played Wizard or Sorcerer that takes the spell selection to drive them towards the Infiltration role is going to perform as well, if not better, perhaps, than the Bard perhaps even as good as the druid almost maybe i still think the druid is going to be better um but, but it's close but it's close yeah yeah but you have to build for it yeah and, and in many cases you might want to build your character differently so with all of that in mind here are the final rankings that monty and i gave to the classes uh, we were mostly in agreement. Uh, a few differences there and i think i shocked everybody with my uh, vote for druid because when we look at the community rankings, we're going to notice that uh, it's a little bit of a different opinion from yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay, because I think that there are many strong options for the Explorer Infiltrator and many classes that people underestimate. Do I think the Rogue deserves one of the top spots? Absolutely. And clearly, our community thinks so as well. 
You cannot build a rogue that is bad at infiltration and, ex and exploration. That's why they probably have the highest ranking here. The Ranger, another really, really strong contender, also gets very high praise. Druid, although much lower, does get a fair amount of votes for being the best in the game. And I commend those people for knowing some of the little secrets of mm -hmm. how good a druid can be. We might have the benefit of having seen three and four, or four druids in our games yeah, constantly be the explorer and infiltrator yeah. in every situation. Yeah, and in games where there was a rogue in the party as well. And I think that when you have a rogue and a druid in the party and a druid plays that way, you see the difference firsthand. Ultimately, 66.8% of our community gave the top spot to the rogue, and I don't think it's undeserved. If you're playing by the rules of conventional infiltration, I think the word infiltrator is almost synonymous with rogue. Yeah. So I think there's a very strong association with it, and people imagine that first and foremost. I think also when people talk about exploration, they think about traps. And I think that there is this mentality that the rogue is the only class that can deal with traps. That's wrong. A lot of other classes can deal with traps, and the only way to deal with traps isn't just using thieves' tools to disarm them. You can fireball a trap, and you can smash a trap with an axe. But um, <laughs> but the rogue is amazing. They are the best yeah. at dealing with traps from a using thieves tools perspective. Indeed. If they take expertise in thieves tools. Yeah. So the rogue has so many things going for it. And I, I won't shy away from the fact that I, I'd say it deserves uh, the ranking that it gets. Uh, we just really want to highlight how mm. good the druid is. I think though that the the druid is amazing. I think that the bard is amazing as well. Um, again, the bard is a very distant fourth place, but I think it does highlight you know the ranger, the rogue, the druid, the bard are really foremost in people's minds when thinking about infiltrators. And there were some notable votes for the sorcerer, warlock, and wizard. Again, I think which acknowledges. Yeah, you can build a really effective character. But once again, when we're thinking about which is the class that is just going to be amazing at it, regardless of what choices you make. Like, I mean, this is the whole thing. As a druid, you could be a moon druid or a shepherd druid, wild shape in somewhere, and then summon a horde of animals to cause a stampede in the middle of the enemy encampment. And your enemy might not even know they were there, that you were ever there. As a rogue, if you want to strike, you got to be the one to draw the dagger and you better hope that that sneak attack is the only attack you need to make because if it isn't the fatal blow now you're in for a world of problems <laughs> As always, we do these videos as a thought experiment. There are no right or wrong answers, but we hope that this highlights some of the great options that you can choose to be an explorer infiltrator. Every class brings so many great features to the table, and the games of D&D are all about having a great group of players that cover all the different bases. So we hope that this video helps you choose your next character if you're excited to play an explorer and infiltrator. If you have different opinions from us or want to sound off about what you think, tell us in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity, feedback, and support of our Patreon community. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider becoming a supporter of our show by following the links in the description below. And if you want to see me playing a rogue and not being a very good explorer or infiltrator, <laughs> check out our live play in the Worlds of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we've got plenty more tier rankings if you enjoy that kind of type of content for D&D 5e right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.